Alright guys, my name is Meta Goblin, and today we're going to be counting down the top 5 really fun things that you can do in Classic WoW if you're kind of getting bored of the game. So if you're feeling a bit bored of the game because you've got all the raids on farm, the raids aren't particularly challenging anymore, you've done the dungeons over and over again, then fair enough. But there are a number of different things that you could do in Classic WoW which are still pretty fun, and that's what I'm going to highlight in this video. But just before we jump in guys, please do give me a quick follow on Twitch if you want to catch any of my live streams. So the first thing I recommend to do is storyline leveling. So what do I mean by this? Basically, there's an add-on called Storyline, which provides a much more immersive way of basically accepting and turning in quests to the point where you basically are going to pay attention to the actual story of all the questing zones that you're going to go through because it kind of dissects the information in a way that it will only tell you the important information in kind of like these little cinematic dialogue boxes. So you kind of you do actually get a grasp of what is going on in the game and the story and the lore of the game when you go to new questing hubs. In all honesty, the most of the time when I'm levelling, I just zerg through it and I auto accept all the quests and I don't really pay attention to it. So what I've started doing is just levelling slowly in my own time. I'm not rushing, I'm not using quest guides or anything like that. Well, I do use questy, but I don't use levelling guides which are like provide me an optimal levelling route. And what I do is I just go out into the world, I go out and I explore, and I do the quests that I want to do, I don't like switch zone when it's more optimal to switch zone, I finish quests that I want to finish, I do all the dungeon quests that I want to do, and I just generally, you know, just enjoy a much more immersive and story focused experience. And this is, this is the menu here, like, it basically almost kind of makes the game feel totally new and fresh, in all honesty, you've got these dialogue options, it, it almost feels like you're playing Skyrim or something like that, to be honest. You can click your little reward here, um, I'm going to choose the water, and there you go. It's pretty cool. We've got another quest here I can show you briefly. Um, you know, your, your priest training window's there, and I can turn this quest in, in, in as well. And yeah, it's just, it's really cool. Number two on this list, I have written down, become a superhero. So what do I mean by that? What I want you to do is think back to the times when you were leveling in areas like Stranglethorn Vale and Tenaris, which are very contested with both faction, both players from each faction, and how much you got ganked and how frustrating it was when you had to reset your escort quest. And imagine how cool it would have been if a high level player came to rescue you, I mean he'd be a pretty cool guy, and he'd be pretty much, you know, basically a borderline superhero. So what I would recommend you to do, because I do find this quite fun, um, for example, what I like to do is I like to go back to Stranglethorn Vale and protect uh, Alliance players from turning in their quests. And the thing is, over time, you're eventually going to build a reputation for basically being like the saviour of the low-level players. And I think, you know, that will provide like a, a lot of fun interactions with, you know, friendly players and obviously enemy players, and just generally be quite a fulfilled, you know, fulfilling experience. I mean, what you're doing is you're basically becoming a guardian angel for all the low-level players. You know, they can be in your guild, or they don't even have to be in your guild. And then eventually, you may even need to bring in more players because your, you know, the enemy players are providing such trouble. And I think personally that this will provide a very fulfilling and fun, you know, world PvP experience because you aren't just like PvPing for the sake of getting honor. You're kind of PvPing for the sake of protecting your own faction. And over time, you're eventually, you are going to build a reputation and people are going to recognize you in-game and just be, you know, pretty grateful that you saved them from getting ganked. So yeah, I just think it'll be quite a fulfilling thing to do. For number three on this list, we have uh, personal challenges. So what I mean by this, um, an example would be, I'm trying to set myself a personal challenge on my rogue to solo General Angerforge, which is a really difficult solo, which involves a lot of kiting and a lot of tactics. Which w What's really interesting about challenges like that is they provide very unique mechanics, right, and very unique strategies in order for me to complete that task. It's almost like I'm doing killing my own raid boss and... It's basically as difficult, in, in fact, to be honest, it's more difficult than raiding in a guild, to be honest, doing a lot of bo you know, boss soloing. So I find it almost like playing a Dark Souls game, and I find it very fun and obviously quite satisfying to do, especially when you get loot, you know what I mean? So what I'd recommend is like looking at your class and kind of... It's a great way to learn how to play a class as well because you're really trying to optimise your class and, and essentially draw on all that class of strengths to its maximum capability in order to complete a very difficult task. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, soloing bosses in dungeons, it can be soloing open world bosses and just generally challenging things like that. And if you do manage to do something really difficult 
that hasn't been done before, for instance, Rogue soloing General Angerforge, and you make a video about it and put it on YouTube, then again, you are going to basically gain a reputation for doing that. Which can be quite, you know, a fulfilling experience in itself. For number four on this list, we have guild social events. So what do I mean by this? Basically, obviously raiding is a social event in itself, but I'm talking about non-raiding events that you can possibly do. From my experience, what I've done when I've been a leader or an officer of a guild, I've organised fun events like Hide and Seek in Stormwind City, which is really fun to do. Basically, you get everyone together um, in a group, and then you obviously leave the group because, you know, you can obviously see where people are when you're in a group of them and uh, basically obviously one person is it and has to go and find everyone else and then you kind of team up I think well you call it stick tick don't don't you where well, you kind of have to team up and find everyone else in Stormwind City I've also done Elwyn Forest as well and stuff like that and that could be really fun I've also done cool costume competitions when there was such a thing as transmog in a game but even if there's you know obviously there isn't transmog in classic wow but you can still pull it off because you can still equip gear so Obviously Halloween has passed, but maybe you could do a Christmas themed kind of costume competition. It doesn't necessarily have to be a costume competition, you know, for a specific event or anything like that. You could also do something like a dueling competition, although I think everyone in the guild would probably fall out of each other if you did that, so it depends on how you want to do that. Another thing I was thinking, it's almost like a bonus tip in itself, that you and your guild can go basically do an exploration. What I mean by exploration, I don't necessarily mean like finding new areas or anything like that. But you could team up together to explore certain glitched areas. For instance, you know, one night you can decide, let, let, I want to I wanna get into high gel with my guild. Or even simpler things like, I want to jump onto the the uh, tavern in Goldshire. You know, because that's quite a difficult feat in itself. But it is, I'm pretty sure it is possible in Classic WoW. Just little tasks like that, that can provide just some, you know, something fun and interesting to do. While we're on the topic of guilds, I've kind of got another bonus, you know, another bonus round that you could uh, talk about. This isn't necessarily going to be the fifth one, but we'll call it 4.5. What are, Another cool thing that you can do is there are elements of world PvP that can become extremely fun. For instance, um, when it comes to dungeon entrances, entrances. So an example that I can think of from top of my head is dominating the entire Eastern Plague Land Zone. So what you can do is you can get basically... A team of people camping the entrance to Eastern Plaguelands, people camping Light Oak Chapel, and people camping the Stratform entrance, and you can totally lock down the entire Eastern Plagueland zone and prevent the Horde of the Alliance from getting into Stratform and Scholomance and, well, Stratform mainly, and just totally prevent them from getting there either, until they have to bring an entire huge raid to finish you off. You know, just generally fun things like that, or maybe you, you can dominate the the Upper Blackrock Spire dungeon entrance. Like, you don't actually go to Upper Blackrock Spire to necessarily do the dungeon, you just go there simply to contest the area and totally dominate and control Blackrock Mountain. Just little fun things like that, that they don't necessarily have a reward or an end goal, they're just, you're just doing something kind of nice for your server and your faction, which again, if you do that as a guild, your guild is going to build a reputation for doing that. So the last thing on this list is become a shopkeeper. So there's an add-on called I Am A Merchant, which essentially turns you into an in-game NPC merchant. So as you can see, I've got the menu open here. I've got a number of items, obviously ignore the prices because it's for demonstration purposes. And if people also have this add-on, they can simply press a keybind on my character and then they will see this inventory, they will see this menu, and they will see what items I have for sale. Obviously, there is limitation of requiring that add-on, but you know what? If you, ha if you have a guild, you can get recommend your guild members to kind of download the add-on, and so that they can see your shop. And then, you know, w from word of mouth, people are going to kind of probably learn that you are basically making the effort to become an in-game shopkeeper, and people will probably make them more and more for effort to actually get this add-on and try it out. At, at the end of the day, you don't necessarily need the add-on. You can just you know, become a shopkeeper and spam the trade chat that you are and make yourself known as a shopkeeper and again, like, over time you can build your build your reputation up more and more as a shopkeeper. I mean, it's just a little gimmicky kind of role-playing thing that you kind of do. It's not necessarily like hardcore role-playing. Role-playing should also probably be on this list, but I know that's not for everyone. You can only really do it on role-playing servers, but you don't necessarily have to be in a role-playing server to do this, you know, you can become a shopkeeper and I just think it's a generally cool thing to do. 
when this add-on perhaps gets more and more popular, it'll be easier to do, but at the end of the day, like, from word of mouth, if you tell people about this add-on, you tell people if you're a shopkeeper, you build that reputation, then more and more people will, are probably going to be more likely to actually download the add-on and, you know, follow in your example. But anyway, guys, that's all I have time for today. My name is Metagoblin, and to my next video, ciao.